The first ayah has another ayah which completes it, but it is the reverse meaning. So one ayah mentions that if you do good deeds and you're a believer, Allah will give you al hayat al tayyibah Then you have وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Whosoever turns away from my remembrance, he will surely lead a miserable life. So in the Quran, we have Allah promising two things in this context. A good life for the believer who does good deeds and a miserable life for the one who turns away from his remembrance. And the scholars say a dhikr here involves the whole deen of Islam. It is not referring to someone who doesn't say subhanallah a hundred times or alhamdulillah a hundred times, even though that is in part of it, but it's not referring to that limited uh, linguistic meaning of dhikr. Dhikr here is comprehensive to everything which serves as a reminder about yawm al-qiyamah. That's why Allah called it dhikr. Inna nahnu zanna dhikr. This dhikr is the whole thing, the whole deen of Islam in its totality, Quran and the sunnah. So the more we turn away from them, the more we've been promised a miserable life. And this is something which you can witness with your own eyes and the lives of the people around you. The more they turn away from the teachings of Islam, the more the situation becomes miserable. How does it become miserable? It doesn't mean that suddenly his car disappears. It doesn't mean he doesn't wake up for Fajr. So he gets out of the house, he sees that the car is not outside anymore. And it's like, oh, automatic. Oh, I didn't pray Fajr and Jama'ah. Oops, my car is gone. Then he misses Dhuhr, then he loses his job. He misses Asr, then he divorces his wife. He misses Maghrib, now he's begging for money outside the masjid. He misses Isha, a car runs him over. See? Some people think that it has to be like this for the equation to make sense. Absolutely not. The misery is not so shallow that you immediately lose something. The misery could be that you don't know how to deal with certain things that happen in your life. Misery could be that something happens to you and you freak out and panic. You don't have that, that iman which will keep you firm. Which will allow you to say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Alhamdulillah in all affairs and situations. A person missing these important traits is sometimes among the biggest reasons of misery. This is the same thing that leads to people to say, why did this happen to me? Oh Allah, why me? Why me? This is the last question a true believer will ever ask. Subhanallah, how can we say to Allah, why me? Think Allah is going to do, you know, Allah is going to harm a believer for, for, for just for fun? Hasha lillah, Allah raised himself above this. That Allah Azza wa doesn't play with His creation in this, in this manner. Allah doesn't play with His creation. So when these things happen, they're for a reason. And the true believer has skills to deal with it. The miserable person is the one who the smallest calamity for him becomes the biggest source of misery because they don't have the tools to deal with it. So there is justice in the whole subject. The more... We turn away from the teachings of the deen, the more misery will come around, even after some time. And even if it's delayed until the life to come, then that is miserable enough, wallahi. That a person sees others entering Jannah, and he's not among them. The first batch to enter Jannah, and, and we cannot be among them. And it's not like you see people entering Jannah and then you're like, okay, well, I guess I didn't make it, so I'll just relax on this chair for the next few hundred years. No, there is another destination. If we don't make it to Jannah, we're going to hell. Simple. Subhanallah. So reflect. Reflect on this for a while. So it is important then to keep... The dhikr in, its, in all of its meanings and, and byproducts integral in our, in our lives. And the more we adhere, the happier we will become.